Photo Plus includes the powerful Cutout Studio, a dedicated studio environment that allows you to separate the subject of a photo from its background. It's very easy to use and in this tutorial I'll show you how to create your cutout and then place it on a new background. Open the photo you want to cut out and on the Photo Studio toolbar, click Cutout Studio. Cutout Studio includes its own help pane on the right here. This provides instructions to help you choose the right method and the right tools depending on the image you're working with. For example, I'm told that if my image has a simple or uniform background, I should choose the discard brush tool. Whereas if my image has a complex background and a more simple subject of interest, I should choose the keep brush tool. My photo has a simple uniform background, so I'll choose the discard brush tool. And then I'll select a large brush size to start with. I'll ensure that the Grow Tolerance checkbox is selected. This setting controls the precision with which areas are selected. It tells Photo Plus to extend the area under the brush into the surrounding pixels. And this option is particularly useful when you're working on very simple or uniform areas such as this one. Now I just click and drag on the areas of the image I want to discard. For the more detailed areas, I'll choose a smaller brush size. To get a better idea of the areas that are to be kept and those that are to be discarded, I can click the Show Tinted button. You can see that this area here has been marked to be discarded, but I want to keep it. To do so, I just click the Keep Brush tool, and this time I'll clear the Grow Tolerance checkbox because I only want to select the pixels directly under the brush. I don't want my selection to be extended. Now I just paint over the areas I want to keep. You can see how precisely I'm now able to select this area. At this point, I'm quite happy with my cutout, so I could just click OK to accept my changes and close the dialog. However, over on the toolbar, notice that the Restore Touch-Up and Erase Touch-Up tools are greyed out. These tools only become available for selection in preview mode. So if I click Preview, you can see that these tools are now available for selection. You can use these tools to refine your image by erasing or restoring pixels around the edges of your cutout. You can also adjust the hardness value. Lower values will produce a softer, more blended edge, while higher values will produce a more defined edge. On the Output Settings tab, you can refine your cutout even further by adjusting the Width and Blur settings. The Width setting controls the area of the image that is to be faded into the background. Generally, use a lower setting for images with intricate edges and a higher setting for images with cleaner edges. The Blur setting sets the degree to which the faded edge is blended into the background. Generally, large values will be more aesthetically pleasing However, you may want to reduce the blur setting depending on your image and the background into which you want to blend it. You can read more about these settings and the touch-up tools in the help pane. OK, I'm happy with my cutout, so I'll go ahead now and click OK. And there's my cutout image. Let's now place this cutout onto a new background. First, I click Edit, Copy to copy my image to the clipboard. Now I'll open the image I want to use as a background. I opened this photo earlier so I can just select it from the Documents tab. Back to the Edit menu and I'll choose Paste as New Layer. My cutout is pasted onto my background as a new layer. 
and you can see it here on the Layers tab. Now I can use the Deform tool to resize the cutout and move it into position. And there's my finished composition. Let's take a look at some of the other composite images I created using this same cutout. 